Hi everybody, I'm Conductor Parker and I have a fun and infotaining little show for you today. It's about time, literally. Pardon the stains on my vest, but uh, that's what happens when you make about 400 cups of hot chocolate every North Pole Express season. And on this caboose we've got one rule, never ever let it cool. Hi everyone, sorry I'm late, but I would be on time if we were about 20 miles west of here, and if it were the mid-1800s. Local town's time would be based on when the sun was directly overhead, so it might be noon here, but 20 miles west of here, it wouldn't be noon until 30 minutes later. Imagine the trouble that would cause making railroad train schedules. A train could leave here at noon, and 20 minutes later arrive in a town 30 miles west of here at, you guessed it, noon. It made the trip in no time. Not knowing when a train was leaving or arriving could even cause a dreaded train wreck. So the railroads were instrumental in creating standardized time and even time zones across the country. That way, from America's east coast to its west coast, time could be measured by a published standard and set into time schedules. But, and that's a big but, None of this would matter if railroad stations and depots did not have an accurate way to keep track of time. So every station and depot got a high quality clock. The largest supplier of railway depot and station clocks was the Ansonia Company. Here's an exemplary clock. We can see it's not running and it's not set yet. So I'll show you how to set it. We use the key on the winding mechanism and it winds counterclockwise like that. Then you start the pendulum motion, which the spring keeps going, and you set the clock. I like to set it to 1225. <laughs> like that. Of course, you'd set it to the proper time. Put the key back in the case for the next day setting and you're on your way to telling the right time but and that's a big but all the railroad workers the brakemen the switchmen the yardmen the engineers the firemen the conductors they all needed a dependable rugged and accurate way of keeping time and wristwatches hadn't been invented yet filling this need came the development of the railroad grade pocket watch which became ubiquitous that's our vocabulary word of the day for everywhere among railroad workers. Two of the largest railroad pocket watch companies were the Hamilton Watch Company and the Ball Watch Company. This happens to be a Hamilton watch. Alright, here's an example of a 1907 Hamilton pocket watch. It's got 21 jewels in there to help it keep accurate time. Now you would only buy the, the movement or the insides separately and they would come in a, a container like this. And since there were no such things as wrist watches or wristbands, the way you'd customize it would be you'd buy your own special backing. Always gold and usually with a pretty uh, engraving on it. And then you would put it on yourself and your watch would be protected. Now this one isn't running right now. Notice the five minute delineations all the way around the outside of the dial. That really helps in telling time. The large Arabic numerals also help in telling time at a glance. Then you've got the sweeping second hand for really accurate timekeeping. Now I'm going to show you how we would set it and wind it. You take the crystal off, pull out the little tiny set pin right there, which you can't do unless you take the crystal off, and then set your clock to the desired accurate time, usually judging by the depot clock or one of your co-workers. Push the pin back in, then you're free to wind it with the stem. Notice the second hand now is sweeping. And if you could hear it, you would hear tick, 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 tick. 
Then it's just a matter of putting the protective crystal back on. And you're ready to keep railroad time. So now you can imagine almost every morning or every crew change or every shift change on the railroad, all the workers gathering together around the station depot clock and performing the time honor tradition, pun intended, of synchronizing watches. That way, always sure of the time, all the railroad workers could really stay on the ball. And the saying actually comes from the dependability of the ball railroad pocket watches. Oh, would you look at the time? I have to highball out of here on my scheduled train. Will you please help me say those two little A words that all train conductors say to make sure that everybody is aboard? <clears throat> oh!